Right, everyone, I'm going to do another theory test. Hopefully, scoring 50 out of 50. You want to reverse into a side road. What should you do if you aren't sure that the area behind your car is clear? Look through the rear window only. Get out and check. Check the mirrors only. Carry on, assuming it's clear. Well, I mean, the safest option. Rear, rear window is not enough by itself, the mirrors only is not enough observation by itself. To carry on assuming it's clear, well, I mean, you can't assume it's clear, you got to think the worst, that's not safe either, so get out and check. Which sign means that pedestrians may be walking along the road. Okay, um, that would be this one here, top left, let me click on it. The others, uh, the one below it, that's pedestrian crossing ahead. This one with children means warning your children ahead, possibly playground or school. And this one shows elderly people ahead. Where would you see this sign? Uh, showing school children, so that is going to be on a school bus. What does this sign mean? Uh, well, it's a, a negative order, so it's a round sign which is an order, and if it's white with a red ring border, that's a negative instruction, so no motorcycles, because motorcycles is what's pictured. You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? Um, well, if they're in the left-hand lane... Uh, Theoretically, as they're cyclists, they should be turning. Hmm. I'd expect them to be going left or ahead if they're in the left hand lane. Um, but you know what? They're unpredictable, so I'm going to say any direction. What's the purpose of these road markings? Okay, this is a yellow zigzag, and uh, zigzags denote an area that must be kept clear at all times. Yellow ones will be uh, timed, so there'll be certain times that they're not allowed to stop, wait, or park within that area. So, to ensure children can be seen and be seen when they're crossing the road. To ensure they have nothing to do with delivery vehicles, it's not relevant to them. Um, it's not relevant to the teachers either. And it's definitely not a pick up or drop off point. This means we're not allowed to block this. So, and we're not allowed to block it so that oncoming traffic can see where the children are and the children can see the oncoming traffic. So, to ensure children can see and be seen when they're crossing the road. This sign shows a traffic signal uh, which is struck through, so traffic lights out of order. How can you reduce the chances of your car being broken into when leaving it unattended? All right, take all the valuables with you, place any valuables on the floor, park near a taxi rank, park near a fire station. Um, taxi rank and fire stations don't offer any more security, and plus you're not guaranteed to find one either. So, uh, placing valuables on the floor, they could still be visible, so taking valuables with you. Uh, for instance, you wouldn't normally get out of your car and leave your mobile phone in it, or your purse or your wallet, you take it with you. Okay, this sign is a warning triangle, and it's warning you that there is a T-junction ahead, because this diagram is shaped like the letter T. Uh, it happens to show the thick bar, which is the, the thick bar has priority. So this is basically showing you've got a T-junction ahead where you're approaching from the bottom, and you have priority to follow it around to the left over the side road on the right. But it is just simply telling you there's a T-junction ahead. You're at the scene of an incident, how could you help someone who's suffering from shock? Definitely don't give them a warm drink, plus you might not have the means to do that anyway. Do not offer them a cigarette, um, and they might not smoke, they might not appreciate that. Um, offer them some food, again that's not safe either, we don't know what kind of injuries they have. So, I mean, drink, food, cigarette, uh, not safe regarding that you don't know what injuries they have, Just reassuring them is the best thing you can do. On a road where trams operate, which vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? Right, um, that's going to be cyclists, because the tram rails, uh, there's a slight gap in the rails, and, and the bicycle wheels can get snagged in those um, and trap the cyclists, so they're going to be quite vulnerable to that. 
Um, plus the rails can be very slippery in the wet as well, so that's even harder for them. What should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow moving vehicle on a busy road? Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. Okay, if you follow um, a long, slow moving vehicle closely, the chances are it's going to be a lorry and it's going to be filling your views. You won't be able to see past it. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. Um, no, we should, you know what? Nobody should ever wave people past. You, I mean, the driver might wave you past and you go overtake and it could be an oncoming vehicle. Uh, which you have a head-on collision with, so you never trust anyone waving you either. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. Uh, no. If it's your side that's blocked because you're following it, the oncoming has priority over you and you can't take it from them. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead, and when you can see nothing coming the other way, then you can pass the lorry if you need to. What's most likely to increase fuel consumption? Poor steering control, staying in high gears, accelerating around bends, harsh braking and accelerating. When is fuel consumption at its highest? When you're braking, when you're accelerating, when you're coasting or when you're turning sharply. Okay, braking means you're slowing down so your fuel consumption is going to go down. Coasting, uh, we should never do. Uh, coasting means the car's freewheeling so you have loss of steering and braking power. From that that's not safe when you're turning sharply uh, no again if you're turning you'll be sliding down for that when you're accelerating is what will use the most fuel oops let me do that sorry guys okay next question why should you look carefully for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions they may want to turn into the side road they're harder to see they may slow down to let you turn they might not see you turn. Okay, motorcyclists and cyclists are harder for us to see because they're smaller. What should you do when you're approaching this crossing? Well, okay, so in this case, the picture got pedestrian waiting to cross the road on the right, and we should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross the road. So, definitely not speed up because the guy might step in front of you. Stop and wave the pedestrians across. Okay, we never do that. We never wave them out because if we beckon him to cross, we can't control the oncoming traffic. You might get hit by them. Continue unless the pedestrians step out. No, that'd be unsafe because again, they could step out on approach. So prepare to slow down and stop. What's the speed limit for a car towing a caravan or a dual carriageway? Uh, would it be 10 mile an hour and would it would normally less than what it would normally be? Um, so dual carriageway. National speed limit would be 70 and you got knocked 10 mile an hour off, so 60. Your vehicle broke down on the hard shoulder of a motorway but has now been repaired. How should you rejoin the main carriageway? Okay, um, again you've got to do what's safest. The traffic on the on the motorway is going to be doing 70 mile an hour um, if they're all obeying the speed limit, which a lot of people don't, so they could be faster. So we want to get up to speed and match the speed of the traffic on the carriageway before we move on to the main carriageway, before we move out onto the motorway carriageway. So gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right hand lane of a three lane motorway? Okay, um, motorcycles can use all of the lanes, uh, so can delivery vans, so vehicles towing a trailer. Why should you check the information leaflet before taking any medicine? Uh, okay, this is because some medicine can have side effects like making you drowsy. Um, so they affect your ability to drive. So sometimes medicine can affect your ability to drive safely. How can you make sure that a satellite navigation sat -nav system doesn't distract you when you're driving? Um, well, you can't turn it off because it's, it's your sat nav, you're trying to follow it, so you need it on. So that's not that one. Only set the destination when you're lost. Um, no, I would disagree with that as well. Choose a voice that you find calming, or set it before you start your journey. Okay, set it before you start your journey. You shouldn't be interacting with anything uh, on the move. How would a police officer in a patrol vehicle signal for you to stop. Flash the headlights, indicate left and point to the left. Use the siren overtake, cut in front. No, they won't cut in front. 
and stop. Um, cutting in for earlier, what they call hard stop for a criminal, stopping a criminal. Um, overtake and give a slowing down arm signal. Pull alongside you, use the siren and wave you to stop. Okay, they might not be able to pull alongside you, you may not be wide enough road, so can't do that. Likewise, they might not be able to overtake either. Um, normally, they'll follow you, flash their headlights, indicate left, and point to the left. What does this sign mean? Okay, it's warning triangle showing because um, you drive on the left. Look at this sign from left to the right hand side, and it's a downhill gradient being shown of 10%. So steep hill downwards. What does a red traffic light mean? You should stop, basically. Um, you must stop and wait behind the stop line. What should you do when you're approaching roadworks on the motorway? Definitely slow down. Uh, motor roadworks means there's going to be pedestrians, i.e. the road workers, um, and you're usually going to find a reduced speed limit for that. So, obey the speed limit. When are you allowed to stop on the motorway? Uh, it's going to be emergencies only, so break down on medical episode. Uh, so when you need to use a mobile phone, no. When you wish to pick up hitchhikers, no. When you need to walk and get fresh air, no. When you're signaled to do so by traffic signals. Well, I've never heard of that one before, but I mean it's going to be that. Um, traffic signals are going to be the overhead gantry. Um, something along those lines, like a red X across all the lanes, something like that. But we can't stop and get out to have a walk. And we can't stop to pick up hitchhikers, and we can't stop to use a mobile telephone either. Which type of vehicle does this sign apply to? Okay, um, you got an arrow top and bottom, which is basically pinching uh, from the floor to the to the ceiling, essentially. So this is a height limit. So this is going to refer to high vehicles. Um, and it's a height limit restriction, so it's a negative order, a round circle with a red ring, meaning any vehicle over 4.4 metres tall must not try and pass because you won't fit. If you're driving on a motorway at night, which lights should you have on if the other vehicles, sorry, if there are other vehicles just ahead of you? Any driving at night will be using dipped headlights. Main beam headlights are too bright, they're for use on an unlit country lane. Uh, with no one in front of you, you don't want to be blinding them in the mirrors. Um, front fog lights are a similar thing, they're quite dazzling. Side lights not bright enough, they are nowadays called parking lights, which we use when parked at night. Okay, which vehicles are least likely to be affected by side wind? Or at least likely. Side wind will affect a cyclist quite, quite badly. Um, high sided vehicles also, big flat surface for the wind to hit. Motorcyclists will also be affected by them. Um, cars less so, they're, they're heavy, they don't get moved around much, but they're small, so there's not much uh, surface area, so at least likely to be affected will be a car. What should you do when you see this sign as you travel along a motorway? Okay, this sign is ordering you to leave the motorway at the next exit. What much do you do if poor health affects your driving? Okay, you need to inform the licensing authority for that. It's nothing to do with the police. Um, having an accompanied person doesn't help. I mean, your accompanied person may not even be qualified to drive, so that doesn't help you whatsoever. Avoid using motorways. Um, you should avoid using any road if you're not fit to drive. So inform the licensing authority. Why do motorcyclists use dipped headlights in daylight? Okay, um, so that the rider can be seen more easily. Doesn't improve the rider's vision, doesn't stop the battery overcharging. The rider is inviting you to proceed. Um, well, yeah, can't say that either. Um, flashing lights or whatever can have various different signals. What does this sign mean? Okay, it's round, so it's an order. 
and its blue background, so positive order, and the arrows are pointing to the left and right. So, uh, approaching traffic passes you on both sides. No, you may pass either side to get to the same destination. You're going to find this sign on an island in the middle of the road, which you're allowed to pass on the left or right hand side of it. Which sign means no stopping. Okay, this one top left, that is no overtaking. The one below it, national speed limit sign. Uh, this one, no motor cars allowed. So this top right means no stopping allowed, what we call an urban clearway sign. You're on a smart motorway, what does it mean if a red cross is showing above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all the other lanes? Okay, that, uh, well the red cross means that the whichever one that is above, in this case the hard shoulder, that lane is closed. You can you cannot use ever use the hard shoulder as a rest area. The hard shoulder can be used as normal. Nope, that's it's cross means it's closed off. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. The hard shoulder has a speed limit of fifty. Right. Um, out of all of those, it's not telling us that the hard shoulder has a speed limit of fifty either. So. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. What's the main benefit of driving a four wheel drive vehicle? Uh, improved grip on the road, shorter stopping distances, lower fuel consumption, or improved personal comfort. Okay, it does improve the grip on the road because it means all four wheels are doing the driving as opposed to two fronts or two rears, depending on what you've got. Excuse my children in the background. Um, this is the problem of doing this on lockdown, <laughs> unfortunately. So you're going to have my son having a meltdown in the background, so apologies for that. Who's responsible for paying the vehicle excise duty road tax? That will be the driver of the vehicle. Sorry, wrong. Not the driver of the vehicle. The registered keeper of the vehicle. Because I might be... Um, Leasing a vehicle, for instance, it's not my problem, it'd be the leasing company that's to do that. So the registered keeper of the vehicle is the one who pays the, the vehicle excise duty or road tax. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from normal at a roundabout? Sports car, estate car, van, or long vehicle? Okay, long vehicles, because they're long, uh, they have problems due to its size of maintaining their lane. So they may have to take a different route or they may have trouble holding their lane, so I'm going to put them on vehicle. Other drivers may sometimes flash their headlights at you. What's the official meaning of this signal? There's a radar speaker up ahead, definitely not that. You're not actually allowed to do that. You try and warn other drivers of speed cameras. Uh, you get seen, you're getting done for that. The police don't tolerate that. They're warning you of their presence. Yeah, that's a correct use of flashing your headlights. Uh, it's not correct to flash headlights to give way, uh, or there's a fault with your vehicle. Well, they may not even know that, so they're warning you of their presence. What will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill? Right, the high gears will pull better. No, the high gears are weaker. They pull worse. Uh, overtaking will be easier. No, again, it's hardest road to take up a hill. You imagine trying to do it on a bicycle will give you an idea what it's like. The steering will feel heavier, the engine will work harder. It has to work harder to get up a hill just like you do. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. It's clear to the left but a lorry is coming from the right. Why should you wait even if you have enough time to turn? Uh, Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view, basically, for that. What's the statutory off-road notification or SOAR? Right, this is to do with your vehicle excise duty or your what they call road tax commonly. Um, you might want to keep your vehicle off-road for some time because you're not using it, uh, which means you can notify that it's going to be off-road. So. A notification to tell DVSA that a vehicle doesn't have a current MOT. No. Notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. That one. You've just gone through flood water. 
What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? Okay, because your brakes have got wet, they're going to be a bit slippery, just like they would uh, on a bicycle as well. So any of you that cycle will know when your brakes are wet, they don't work as well. Um, so go slowly while gently applying the brakes, and what that will do is squeeze the water out and dry them out. Right. We'll see if my son continues to have a meltdown to the end of this. I've got six questions left. So sorry about that if you can hear this in the background, but there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. What does a sign with a brown background show? Okay, all of our signs are colour-coded, the information signs. Um, motorway would be blue background. Primary route would be a green background. Minor road would be a white background. Therefore, brown is tourist information. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? Well, you want to stand in the safest location, um, which is usually behind the crash barrier, well away from the carriageway. So next to the phone, um, not ideal. With your vehicle, that's going to be on the hard shoulder, so you're nearer the traffic, so that's not ideal either. Um, on the hard shoulder, again, you're near the, you're near the traffic well away from the carriageway so usually if there's a crash barrier at the side you want to step over the barrier and wait behind that barrier well away from the carriageway you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights what should you do pull over as soon as it's safe to do so yeah we want to do that we want to we want it to get past maintain your speed and cool spike harsh to stop well out into the road. Now that, I mean, that means you're stopping suddenly, you could get rear-ended by it and you're also blocking its path if you pull out to the road. Accelerate hard to get away from it? No, that means you could be um, exceeding the speed limit to do that. Uh, maintaining your speed and course, um, it wants to get past you, so pull over as soon as it's safe to do so to let it pass. The driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to brake hard. What should you do? Uh, okay, I'm going to say ignore the error and stay calm because you know everyone makes mistakes. Never show your annoyance with the car horn, that's a traffic offence to use the car horn in that manner. Flashing your headlights to show annoyance is also a traffic offence, that's not what we use it for. Uh, overtake as soon as possible, well, overtaking at a junction is never safe. So definitely ignore the error and stay calm. You see a pedestrian waiting at a zebra crossing, what should you normally do? Okay, well we should stop and let them cross. That's the safest thing to do. Um, give way to them. And that's what the yellow flashing beacon means, the blue should beacon, that's exactly what it means, give way to pedestrians. Um, so stop to let them cross and wait patiently. What's the nearest you may park to a junction? Um, okay, you can't guess this. You've got to, you have to have read the highway code and know this. Um, and the answer to that is ten meters or thirty-two feet. Which of these signs warns you of a zebra crossing? Um, it's going to be this top left. This shows a pedestrian crossing within a marked area. That means there's a zebra crossing ahead of you. And that's the last question. So let's click on view summary. I've answered all fifty questions. Ending the current test. And I scored 50 out of 50, um, despite the distraction of my old son, four-year-old, uh, having a bit of a tantrum in the background. Sorry about that, out of my control. He's actually downstairs, so he, um, he's got a good set of lungs in him. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording. and. See